Welcome into today's broadcast right here at Cog Hill Farm. Now, Peaches wouldn't let Nugget into the house for this episode, so here's Jason, Brooke, and our chicken master, Mary Carl. What is up, everybody? This is another episode of the Cogcast Podcast, episode number... Six zero. Six zero. Oh. Sixty. Sixty podcast episodes. Can you believe that? Well, I don't think I've been here for 60 but yeah it's all 60 of them oh now my original one we're up to 130 okay well yep. i didn't realize i had been on 60 yep you've been on 60 episodes so that means that i've talked 60 hours yeah at least 60 hours crazy that's a lot it's a lot for those that don't know i started the podcast a couple of years ago and it was just me and it wasn't no video it was just audio only and if you want to, you can go back. You have to go to a podcast site or a podcast app, like even Pandora, even, I'm not going to say her name because she'll come on back there in the back, but she works for Amazon. You can spell her, A-L-E-X-A. That. She'd probably say something. Spotify, Amazon. So the old Amazon. ones are not on YouTube? No, because they're audio only. Oh. Yeah. Audio only. Um, cause this is how podcast got started. Podcast is like your own radio show. Yeah. So that, that's, that's how podcast got started. So, so this is a podcast that people can watch or just listen. Watch or listen to. Yep. Hmm. We're on all the podcasts. You know apps what I'd like sites. to know? What's that? I'd like for people to leave in the comments if they're watching by saying watching or if they're listening by saying listening. It's hard on the listening part because they could be, it's hard to type. And a lot of things like oh. Apple, Apple Podcasts, so sc- they don't have anywhere that you can actually, that. <laughs> actually type anything. Um, Google Play, there, there's tons of, we're on, um, gosh, I don't know. There's, there's, we're syndicated across all the Platform? podcast sites. I don't apps. know anything about that, so I'm just going to let you hear. And everybody it. has their favorite. You know, people like Spotify, people like Podbean, people like Apple. Apple's probably the most popular one, but anyways, this is episode number 60. Episode number 60. And what I want to know is, what is Brooks moving stress level now? Where Where are you oh, now? I didn't know what you were fixing to ask. Yeah. Well, you have been like, what do you want to do? Like, like a one to 10? ten? You've been like a 15 out of 10. Um, I'm about a five. Are you really? I'm about a five. Things are starting to come into place, aren't they? Well, I think that after my last little meltdown of <laughs> we're not going to get it done, that was my simple explanation as Jason looked at me and he said, what's wrong? Because he can always tell when I got a worried look yeah, on my I face. Can. And I said, I looked at him and I said, we're not going to get it done. <laughs> and he like put it in high gear, not to say he wasn't doing anything, but he felt my need to get on it a little well, faster. Well, I wanted you to feel a little bit more comfortable. I, I, well, I didn't even know if at it the opened speed, you up. Well, even at the speed I was going, which was steady, I thought we were fine. But now you can see that. We weren't we're, fine. No, we were we were. It's just that we're progressing a little bit faster. Had than we, we not stepped it up a notch, we wouldn't be fine. I think we have been fine. <laughs> Love that fine. man, don't y'all? <laughs> I still think we would have been okay. I don't. Um, we may not had the, I don't know. But it's not, I say stepped it up. We still, I mean. We stepped it up. That night, you went into high gear. Did I? And that next morning, you were up before me and you were. Moving boxes into the pod that you mm-hmm. wouldn't have been doing had I not had my meltdown. <laughs> I didn't cry. I just had a look on my face, and that that's all it, it takes. And it wasn't even that... a meltdown. You just had a look on your face. Yeah, a look on my face. Yeah. My, my look on my face was Well, all because it... I felt like that you had you had actually calmed down and saw, you know, it looked like we were going to make it. There was no going to be no issues. And then... Two or three days later, you had that look on your face. Well, I might have that look again, but for right now, I'm feeling pretty good. We have exactly, go well, counting the podcast table, we have four pieces of furniture left in the entire house, and that is the couch and the two chairs in the living room, or den. We call them den here in the south. Well, we got the mattresses, too. That counts. Oh, we do have the mattresses, because you got somewhere to sleep, so sleeping on the floor. <laughs> I'm not the sleeping on the floor, are on the floor. Yeah. 
Well, the mattresses are on the floor. The bed's yeah. packed up. Yeah. So besides the podcast table and the couch and chairs, which the couch and chairs are going to be gone today, more likely. So me and Mary Carl have to watch TV on the floor. Well, you know what I thought? What? That um, she still got a bean bag and that other chair yeah. in her bird room. That's and right. we could bring it into the den. We could. I have a tendency to sit at the computer and while they watch TV, yeah. I look for house ideas and I'm just not a big TV person. So I'm in there with them and I can hear their laughter and <laughs> and it puts a smile on my face, but I'm not actually watching what they're watching. So I thought about moving those chairs in there for y'all. That's a good idea. She could sit in the bean bag. You could sit in that green That's a chair good thing. We could do that. And then all we got to do is fold those things. Yeah. Up. We can just throw those on top of the boxes. Yeah. It won't be no big deal. But yesterday, um, well, ever since the last podcast, I will say Jason's been in high gear because he has to, you know, be the brain behind this move because I don't see what needs to be done. <laughs> I mean, he can tell me. Usually I'm the one that tells him what to do when it comes to what we need to do next and stuff like that. But in this instance, he's the one that's telling me what to do. So when he, I say, what do I need to do now? Yeah. And then he instigates it. And I, I just follow behind. But, um, so that's been the, the way it's just flowing. I uh, mean, yeah, it's been flowing pretty good. Well, I, it's I, been flowing so good. Yeah. That one pod is completely filled up. Yeah. It's, 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 we could still get some stuff in the bean bag, small. maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's maxed out. The other one is probably halfway now. And that's Mama's. That's your mom. But and we're gonna put some of our, you know, boxes and yeah. stuff that belong to both of us, uh, Christmas decorations and things like that. We'll go we're, in. Um, our house is probably even the shop. We clean the shop out too. That was a big deal. The that's what I was so the, worried about. The shop. Yes, it's because I could see our house progressing. Right. However, the house wasn't the only thing that needed yeah. to be done. Yeah. We have the barn. We have the shop. We had the sweet shop. Yeah. You know, it's just a lot of things that need to be done. And Jason told me one day, he said, just pick a room and stick to it. Yes. And I did that. And I got the kitchen. I mean, he had already packed the kitchen. But then there were some things that I needed to go through. Yeah. And so I stuck to the kitchen. And, and once I got it to where you could work in there and you could see that how empty it is i felt better yeah yep and i heard you tell your mom yesterday for her to stick to one room because oh she i was acted going. like i acted like that was my <laughs> advice and it came right from here <laughs> mama what you need to do is just stick to one stick room to one room and i didn't tell her jason told me that i just said stick <laughs> to one room and she said okay i'll do that well i don't know if she listened to me or not but it yeah. helped me yeah stick into one room because what happens is if you're spread out, and it may all go at this, you know, it may take all the same amount of time, but mentally, yeah, you can see that one room get finished, right? And so that kind of helps your attitude. Well, she told us um, one day this week that she's going to be finished by Wednesday. That's what she said one day this she week. She told Jason that, and yeah. she didn't tell me that. And Jason told me, your mom says she's going to be finished by Wednesday. And I said, why Wednesday? And he said, I don't know. That's just what she told me. That was, so, yeah. So we went over yesterday and we got some of her furniture. Well, pretty much all well, of our furniture. A bunch furniture. of her furniture that's not going, everything else is going in a tiny house, I'm assuming. Well, we didn't take her bed apart and we didn't do her chest of drawers and we didn't do one night stand. Okay. I don't know if the you... The dresser. Even, we got our chest of drawers. We got our chest of drawers. It, the dresser yeah. wasn't completely empty and I had told her to empty everything. Yeah. I just got a few things in there. I said, well, a few things can't go in the pod. A few things yeah. have to come out. It's got to come out. Can, Everything's got to come out. So she was going to work on that last night so we could move that into her pod. Mm -hmm. But um, she's not going to be done by Wednesday. <laughs> she better put in high gear. She better, <laughs> she better be working right now if she's going to get it done by Wednesday <laughs> because... Her problem was the way I was. It was stuff all over the house. Yeah. And she needs to take one room at a time. And you get overwhelmed. When you start when you when you start doing all you you'll get overwhelmed. I told her, I said, put the stuff that goes to the tiny house over here, put the stuff that goes to the Goodwill over here, and put the stuff that goes to the dump over here. Mm -hmm. And I think she's doing that. Just stick to one room. She'd been putting the stuff that goes to the Goodwill on the porch and I said, What are you gonna do if it rains? Yeah. And so she's just got our corner now that she's Good. putting because the Goodwill's closed, you right. know, on the weekends. And, well, not Sunday anyway. So, and what she's doing is, is she she's boxing stuff up and she sets the boxes out, and that 
you know, lets us know those are ready. Right. And so we get them and we load them all in the pod. Yeah, she hadn't taken yeah. anything to the pod. She just tells yeah. us what's what and yeah. we take it. But, yep. And we but, moved we moved a good bit of our furniture yesterday. We did. So. We um just about everything's done except for, you know, those few things that, yeah. that I said were left. But um I said I said, Mama, what's all this? And she said, it goes to the tiny house. Well, it was a stack of totes the size of this room. <laughs> and I said, Mama, I said, that tiny house ain't going to hold many more totes. And she said, oh, it's not? And I said, no. I said, you're going to have to start going through stuff a little closer and, and getting rid of a few more things. So I didn't want to be the bearer of bad news. But yeah. uh, it, it can I mean, it can hold a lot. It up can in hold the a lot. Lofts, but... Um, can't hold that much yeah so hopefully she saw that as a cue to minimize a little more minimize a little more she's got a lot of clothes and a lot of shoes she does she's a she's uh she's different than me in that aspect yep i have t-shirts and things that i wear she likes to have right clothes enough of that (laughs) (laughs) It aggravates me because I'm just the opposite. But but everybody's different. Everybody's different. Takes all kinds to make the world go round. That is right. Um, since the last podcast where we talked about the pond and us looking for a, a grant or because the, there there's some stuff out there and you contacted a whole bunch of people but couldn't find it. But since then, we have gotten ooh hoodles of emails from you guys. Um, we haven't had a chance to go through them all. I'm not going to get into that in just a second. But I just so happened to open one up this morning, and I want to say thank you for all the emails because yes. you guys are really helping us out on this. And we actually got an email from an employee of the USDA. I thought that was awesome. That put a smile on my face. And thank you so much there. Thank and you to everybody. Th- that's why I said thank you to everybody. This one kind of like came straight from the horse's mouth. Well, yeah. And, and it just caught it. And I want to tell y'all, we... We are in full-fledged moving mode right now, and I would like to tell everybody that we are not going to be able to answer emails, answer messages, reply to comments. Go ahead. Bless you. Talking. Bless Don't you. stop. <laughs> you wanted everybody to hear that. Well, I, um, full-fledged moving mode. And, I, and we're just not going to be able to answer and reply back like we normally do because we're not even... Just, just it happened this morning when I pulled the email up, just checking for some stuff, and that one just caught my eye because it was the first one up there. So, I saw we, one the other day that was the lady that sent us the Americana hatching eggs. Yes, Aracana. I'm sorry, uh-huh. and she sent a couple of emails, and I, I think every evening when I'm fixing to go to bed, I need to respond to her, and I hadn't, and, and I apologize. Yeah, and we we're apologizing to everybody. It's just that from sun up. To sundown and even past sundown, we are just wide open trying to get everything ready to move. Not only that, our brains are going 900,000 miles an hour. It is. And then on top of moving, we got the, 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 the house build. So we're talking to site work guys. We're all reaching out to plumbers. We got the contractors. We're getting prices on stuff. We're looking at cabinets. So all this is going on at the same time. So we certainly apologize to everybody. Um, but as soon as we get settled in and things slow down, we'll be back to normal. Plus two, or, you know, I usually try to put our videos out at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and um, the YouTube schedule is um, for the videos are Wednesday and Saturday at 8 a.m. And Facebook's a day later. So Facebook will be Thursday and Sunday at 8 a.m. on the videos or the vlogs. And then the podcast is, um, is it? Don't, don't even. <laughs> the podcast is Thursday and, and Sunday. Sunday on YouTube and then a day later on Facebook. But with everything that's going on, we're, we're being pulled all which ways. And the only place I can upload, especially the podcast, is at the farm, which is an hour away from here, the new farm. So things, it may not be 8 a.m., it may be 8 p.m. We, we The last podcast was at 8 o'clock at night when I posted it. Finally got to post it. So just bear with us. Check your, if you haven't signed up for our newsletter that comes out every Sunday morning, 
um, do that, just go to our website, thecockhillfarm.com, and you can sign up for the newsletter. And I put out a weekly newsletter that has all the things we did that week on there. So in case you're worried and about links, missing something. Links to, yeah, the links to the videos, Facebook and YouTube, and the Audible podcast. So if um, if you're worried about missing something, you can sign up for the newsletter or just check our pages. Go to our YouTube channel page or go to our Facebook page and everything's there. But we are just, everything's erratic and crazy, but we're trying our best to get everything done. Can you keep that train of thought for a minute? I can. Okay, so... Two podcasts ago, we mentioned that Mary Carl has an Instagram page. It's MC Cog Hill Farm. Cog Hill Farm. Mm -hmm. MC Cog Hill Farm. Okay, so that day, Jason and I went over to the 40, and we did not tell her that we mentioned her (laughs) Instagram page. And she's, she's just, she's, she checks it all the time to yeah. see how many likes she has, how many comments she has. Plus, she just loves taking pictures she and does. making videos. She does. So, yeah. uh, Jason and I went over to the 40, and we were kind of laughing to each other, saying, wonder when Mary Carl's going to realize that she's getting a lot of subscribers. And she said, she sent her friend Caroline a message, and she said, Caroline, have you listened to the latest podcast that my mom and daddy did? And Caroline said, no, why? Because Caroline usually listens before yeah. we do, or she does. And she said, I just wondered. <laughs> so she said about that time, she started thinking, I'm going to listen to it myself. So she said she pulled it up and she started playing it. And she got to the point that we mentioned MC Cog Hill Farm. Mm-hmm. And she said, she said, aha, mm-hmm. I knew I was getting all those likes from somewhere. So if y'all have not already liked Mary Carl's Instagram page, it's MC Cog Hill Farm. Put a link. I'll put a link. I'll put a link back there again. Okay. And she has really enjoyed reading everybody's comments and seeing what people have to say about her birds and things that yeah. we don't show on the videos. She she's got three birds in her room. Um a conyer, a cockatiel. She has four birds in her room. And a Quaker. Oh, yeah. Peen. What's his name? Button. Button. The button quail. She's got four birds in her room. But mainly she posts her parrots. They're not yeah. all parrots. She's going to object to that. Yeah, I'll get in mainly, trouble. Mainly she, her pet birds. Her pet birds. Her pet birds. Zerk the cockatiel, Peanut the conyer, and... Uh, Mondu the Quaker. Yeah, I can't believe you remembered. I, 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 I always say ring neck. Pilgrims, but I wanted to call it. When she got Mondu, she had a choice between a ringneck or a Quaker. Yeah. And the ringneck was green. Yeah. And I don't know why, but she picked Mondu, the Quaker. The Quaker. And he's um, he's quite comical. She put one on there yesterday that said, what are you doing? And he says it all the time. My mama went in her bedroom the other day, and we weren't here. And she said, as soon as she opened the door, Mondo said, what are you doing? <laughs> and she said, she was like, uh, I'm, I'm just in here to, to, to see about something. <laughs> That's so funny. We get tickled because we say if somebody were to come in here in the middle of the night and open her door, one of the birds would say, hello. And they would think, oh, somebody's here to greet yeah. me. <laughs> Another one would say, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> September's our tag renewal month because yeah. we are September. That's right. Well, no, yes. we are Smiths. Yes. <laughs> it's done alphabetically. That's right. And so our tags, I always mail in, and they just send me this decal back. Yep. Now you're in a different state. I don't know how you do it, but um, this year's a little different. Yep, because we're going to be in a totally different county that we're in now. So, so I've got my vouchers, and I've got to go to the Chilton County Courthouse. Yes. And I don't even know where that is, but I bet I'll find it. Yeah, you'll find it. And so all of our tags that have 27 on them, which is Dallas County, mm-hmm. will have to have a 14 on them, which is Chilton County. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I'll take your farm tag on the on the pawpaw truck mm-hmm. won't be done till November. Okay. But I'll have I'll have to take it too because it's got a 27 on it. I have to take it to the That's Chilton right. County Courthouse. But I got to go to the courthouse and get that taken care of um, next week. And the day that I do that, I plan to get a P.O. box in Clanton, okay. well, Chilton yeah, County. I, I think I can do the P.O. box online. Remind me and I'll look. Because we've already got an account set up down. with a post office. And I think I can do that online. Okay. Well, yep. that would save me a trip if we yep. can do that. But yep, yep, yep. I, I can't do my 
my tags online because I'm transferring counties. So okay. that's got to be done. And it's got to be done before the end of the month. And yes. we're about halfway done. Yeah, so. I know it. So we're getting closer. We are getting closer. Uh, what else you got? Other thing is um, I do know that Lester and Carl has called me Nugget out for a dance-off. And we <laughs> we <laughs> plan on doing this. Um but again, we're so crazy. And we've already got videos already recorded. But Well, I you do don't know. have to make a video. Just make it a separate something. Maybe so. That's what I think. Maybe I so. I think just don't make it make clip. the place. Yeah, just a clip. Don't make it take and the place. And just post it on Instagram yeah, and Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll That'll figure be sufficient. that out. We'll figure that out. We will figure that out. But I and will yes, tell you yeah. that Nugget ain't got the moves Carl's got. No, Carl can throw down. If you don't know who Carl is, he is a ostrich. And, um, Boy, that and Lester man. is the owner of I'm a Survivor Sanctuary, and Carl can throw down. And Lester wasn't too, no, too no, shabby no, no, himself. No, no. But I'm telling y'all, Carl could beat all three of us. Yeah, he could. He, yeah. Yeah. Y'all ain't got nothing on Carl. No, Carl. Nugget don't stand a chance. No, Nugget don't stand a chance. <laughs> all Nugget can We're do gonna is, give it our best shot. is it bob his stand. little head around, and <laughs> Nugget's going to say, buddy, you, you, you oh, got this gracious. one. And um, I would say that we are, we are friends with those guys over there. Um, we text each other, so I know that um, some people say, "Hey, you know, contact them." This, this, we 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 we're in constant contact with each other. So yeah, there's um, we're going good, good, good people, good people, and I'm just funny. We 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 enjoy. Oh, them. he's he's funny. Yes. Um, actually, Mary Carl and I kind of found them first, and we started watching some of their stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I told Jason, I said, "Have you ever watched any of that stuff?" And he was like, "Uh, uh," because he's more YouTube oriented, and Lester's more Facebook. -oriented. Yeah, Lester, Lester is. Um, or I'm a Survivor Sanctuary. Their their page is a lot bigger on, on Facebook. Facebook, man, they got like a million, over a million. <laughs> it's followers. unreal. It's unreal. So Mary Carl and I had been laughing at some of their stuff, and mm -hmm. we would you know, start showing it yeah. to Jason. Well, lo and behold, then it just kind of blows up and people are telling Lester that Mary Carl over at Carl Coghill mm -hmm. has an emu and you might want to ask her about how to take care of Carl, the ostrich, two totally different animals. Yeah. And it just became a little, uh, we became in contact with each well, other. We came in contact with each other. We swapped cell phone numbers and now we um, we got us a new friend over there in Texas. And we, we, we get his sense of humor. So it's yeah. not like there's... Um, any issues going on? No, not at us. all. Not at all. Well, I think that that uh, the ostrich Carl, he got it going on. I don't know if y'all have seen it yet, but go over there, tell him cock he'll send you, and Carl, that ostrich can. I mean, y'all, it is. I'm not gonna tell you a story <sighs> though. If I had an ostrich, I'd be kind of scared. Yeah, I Lester's mean, not though. I'm telling you, he is not, and maybe that's it. May that. You probably have to be that way. Oh yeah, they got to know that you're not, you're not scared, scared of, of them, them yeah. because they sense all that. Yep. And he may be scared deep down, but he don't act like it. He doesn't act like it. Now I, I I don't ever let my guard down around Nugget because I do know. I mean, he's never showed any aggression zero whatsoever. Aggression. But that doesn't mean that it couldn't happen overnight because by all means he's an animal. He is an animal. Um, and the difference between Carl because I've heard two people, you know. Carl, if you don't know, Carl is a rescue ostrich, full grown, you know, and I'm a survivor sanctuary, got him, you know, not too long ago as a full grown male ostrich. Yeah. And, you know, Nugget's been hand raised since he was born. That's the born. difference. That's the difference yeah. is I, I, yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, not to say if I had hand raised ostrich, I would feel any better about it, mm -hmm. but at least you would kind of feel a little you know more yeah you, you would know their habits yeah that's true. whereas he's taken in as a grown man yeah who knows totally his habits different. yeah i i just don't know that i could do it but if somebody told me if you don't take this bird he's gonna be turned into boots yeah i would take him in we a second we would take him in a second yeah so i i totally feel his heart for yes. taking that ostrich in because i'm sure he had some of the same feelings we are talking about right yep. now. Well, How can I handle an ostrich? You know. You know, and I've thought about in the in the past um, of changing our place into a sanctuary. I mean, I can totally get and understand why they do what they do. Well, you know, we have a huge heart, and we can't take in every animal that's offered to us. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, you just feel for those that 
that need somewhere to go. Yeah. And if somebody told us something's going to be put down, if you don't take it, then I would have to find it within myself mm-hmm. to find that animal a home if That's I right. couldn't take it. And I commend Lester and his wife, Jamie, mm-hmm. over at I'm a Survivor Sanctuary for doing that. Absolutely. I know that they have fears on a lot of things they take in, and you don't know how it's going to go. You don't know. And some of them that they get are not the healthiest in the world, so you realize it's going to be a challenge, you know, keeping them alive. And and then getting attached to it. Getting you know, attached so, to it and possibly, to, yeah. you know, not making it. Yep. So it's just kind of an emotional roller coaster mm-hmm. there. But, head, you know, kudos to y'all for, yeah, absolutely. for doing absolutely. that. Absolutely. Oh my gracious! So you want to? I just seeing if 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 I stop talking, if you can, if I can keep going. Yeah, yeah. What's funny is is that I've been doing the podcast for like I said, probably three years, and and then when I've never just did it by myself forever, and then having somebody in here, it took a little bit adjustment, and then I figured out how to manage which way we're going. And a lot of times I don't talk, but in reality, I'm kind of still in charge and I try to veer when, when you and Mary Carl are both in here, you know, I could veer which way I wanted it to go. So, I, um, even though I'm not doing a lot of talking, I'm still kind of. Yeah. But there, there are times when I have stopped before mm-hmm. and I've looked at you and I see a blank and I'm like, uh Oh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I don't know what to say. But I do know what to say. I got you. Right now, I know what to say. Oh, my gracious. Well, you wanted to discuss this because you've had a lot of, lot of, lot of people over the past six plus months ask us homeschooling questions. And you've been wanting to do one and discussing about homeschooling and why we did it and... What do what, we use? What we're using and maybe it's ease some people's fears that are thinking about it themselves. And so that's what we're going to get into today. I will say this about homeschooling. Um, this was probably one of the best decisions that we've ever made that I can think of in a while. I mean, the just how big it's impacted us. Yes, but I will say this. A friend of mine and I were talking this morning, Mm -hmm. just this morning Mm -hmm. now, we're talking about uh, the COVID and the fears of the schools closing, and we were talking about another family that made the decision to homeschool this year. I will say that I absolutely positively agree that it's not for everybody. It is not for everybody. I agree with that too. Yes. Um, And I told her that if my child was a social butterfly as some describe that term Mm -hmm. i would not have done it yeah um mary carl is not to say that she can't talk to somebody when they approach her i don't mean that Mm -mm. at all she's very good at that she's very good she she doesn't shy away well she knows she's very good with the younger kids too oh goodness yes she is she's really good with younger kids and even like when um dutch came over with all his girls she she just you know mary carl just just Boom, and just took them. She'll take the lead and, and show everybody everything and talk about everything. So, But that's not her desire is not to be in a public situation, I guess you would say. I guess so. In a crowd. In a crowd. In a crowd. Um, whereas there are so many kids that I feel like need that crowd. Yeah. They need that social. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'll just go back to... Two years old. Yeah. Let's start there. Okay. I um I needed a break. Uh huh. Because Mary Carl did not sleep. Yeah. From the day she was born until she was nine years old. Yeah. Seven years old. She did not sleep. Right. We I can remember buying the baby Einstein DVDs. Yes. And Jason had to work the next day, and I was a stay-at-home mom, and she did not sleep. So during wee hours of the morning, we would be playing Baby Einstein DVDs, and Mm -hmm. you know, um, this is early. This is too early for her to be watching Baby Einstein, but it was all I knew to do. Yeah. So we would we would stay up half the night, and it's not like she'd sleep half the day. 
It's right. not that her sleep schedule was messed up. No, she just didn't require much she sleep. She didn't require much sleep at all. And I do require a lot of sleep. Yeah. And that just didn't didn't jive. I mean, it did not go over well. So um You struggled. I did. I mean, I was so watching the clock for five o'clock to get home so Jason could take over because I was literally exhausted. And then at night I would put on the baby bajorn, the little baby carrier. And then our driveway is 850 foot long. And then I would put her in it and I would walk up and down the driveway because she would eventually would go to sleep that way. Yeah, she would go to sleep that way. And, um, you know, there were times when you'd get her back in and go to lay her down and a and dog would, would bark. Yes, or, goodness. And, oh, goodness, it was just like, mm, mm. Well, I, I, I remember. Your legs were about to fall so off. So many nights that I would come up and down the driveway and she would finally fall asleep. And if y'all don't know, a rooster does not just crow when the sun comes up. Oh, he doesn't. It would be 10.30 or 10.30 p.m. And he would crow. And, of course, she'd wake up. And I was like, man, if I could get my hands on that rooster. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my only time to feel oh, like I'm going to have some relief. It's when he got home mm-hmm. because, you know, the majority of the day it was just me by myself. And it's not that I couldn't take care of my child. It was that I was exhausted. Yeah. So, um, when she turned two, she had the opportunity to go to a little, well, they call it school, but mm-hmm. it was, it was, like it was school. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I thought to myself, I, I can't do this. I can't, I, but then in the other hand, I had to have a break. Mm-hmm. I had to have a break. So we enrolled her in the two year old class mm-hmm. at a little school called Lika's. And it was only is, for a few hours too. It was two days a week. Two days and a it week. was from nine to 12. Yeah. And so, um, she, she, she didn't want to go. Yeah. Well, she, I don't she, think any kid does at that age. Well, it was a lot of crying. Uh-huh. Um, when I dropped her off, it was a lot of crying. She didn't want to, she didn't want to leave her mama. Right. And I didn't want to leave my baby, but then again, I was so exhausted till I didn't have any choice. Mm-hmm. And so after a few weeks of that, I decided I couldn't do it anymore. Right. So I made the decision to quit sending her mm-hmm. and the teacher well, I don't know if you call it a teacher, but she called me mm-hmm. and she said, Brooke, she said, look, she said, I know that you're going through a hard time watching her leave and cry. She said, but I promise you once she gets in the classroom, she's fine. Mm-hmm. Once she gets around the other kids and we start doing activities, she's fine. Well, I can't go in the classroom, so I don't see what she sees. Yeah. But, and that's one of the rules. Oh, you yeah. Know, one of the rules is you had to drop them off outside. You couldn't go in with them yeah. because the teachers know best that... It's best for them to take them from you than right. them clingy, clingy. Right. So she was in the back seat in her car seat, and the teachers would get her out of her car seat and walk her into her classroom. Mm-hmm. They said, once she gets in there, she's fine. It's just that, that instant yeah. that she has to go away from mama. Right. She said, if you take her out, she said, now this is this is from a teacher perspective. Mm-hmm. If you pull her out now, when she goes to kindergarten, you're going to experience it all over again. So yes. you either do it now. Yep. Or you do it when she's in kindergarten. At some point. At some point. If she's going to go to school when they leave that. It's going to be all over again. again. And when she's a little bit older and she's able to have a more fluent vocabulary, it's going to be worse. Yes, what they said, it'd be worse as they get older. So I said, I don't know what to do. I don't Mm. know what to do. I'm exhausted. I can't, you know, I would literally come back at nine o'clock and go to bed. Yeah, because you were getting roughly three hours of sleep at night. Exactly. And, you know, here she had been up all night, and she's up and at them and feeling good the next morning, but Mm -hmm. not me. So I said, okay. I said, I'll I'll keep on. I'll keep on. And as the year went on, she got better. Yeah, she she got, and it was quicker than, it was. um, It was. It was was pretty quick. You know, it was a couple of months of of and it was get it would get better each day. Teary, yeah, teary days, and she didn't get in the car crying. No, when she came in, she when was she fine. came back, mm. she was telling me all about her day. Played and colored and, and had a great time, and it helped with her sleep because she it was become she was more active, stimulated. Yes, yeah. she was more. She was tired. She didn't take a nap. Mm-mm. She, she never, quit. She never took a nap. never took naps. She quit taking naps when she was one year old. Yeah, she did not take a nap. She didn't take naps. And so it helped me to get a good night's rest. Mm-hmm. It helped me to realize that I'm doing this at two years old versus five years old. Right. And so we continued on. So she went to Lika's two years old, three years old, four years old, and she went to Lika's for kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And um, they just went till 
kindergarten went to one o'clock. Yes. From nine to one. And that's why we sent her there because I didn't feel like she was ready for a three o'clock day. Right. So we sent her there and then she went to big school first grade. Mm-hmm. And um, she really just, it was a long day. It was a long day. And as y'all can tell, she's super smart and she got bored. Yeah. She got bored. She she um, she um learned what she needed to learn and then she was ready to go. Right. <laughs> and... So they had a lot of homework in the first grade. They did have a lot of homework in the first grade. And the second grade was even worse. Yeah, so first grade, she uh, she liked it, and she liked being with her friends. But we, when we got home, we had more work to do, and it was it was kind of busy work, I guess you'd say. It was busy work. So we get to the second grade, and second grade just wasn't a good year at all. There were a lot of problems, and she didn't, she didn't like it at all. That's when she started telling us that she didn't want to go. And yeah. Um, she, she started having her health problems in the four-year-old class at Likas. Yep. And that was her autoimmune disease. That's when it, when we caught that and she had autoimmune neutropenia. Yeah. She, um, she got a virus and she, her temperature was up to a hundred and five hundred and six for a week. Well, you know what, you know what popped up on my Facebook, um, memories what? actually yesterday and day for yesterday. What? In the last three or four days is our trip to Disney World. And we had planned that trip to Disney World. And remember, she said she didn't feel good oh, when yeah. we got there. Yeah. And didn't want to do anything. Yeah. And, you know, we're like, oh, my gracious. Here we done. Was you that know, before s- the virus or after? This is when we think was the first sign of her. But was that before the bad that sickness? That was before the bad okay. sickness. See, I, I couldn't even remember yep. that. Remember, because we thought. You know, at the time we didn't know we. Oh yeah, we know. wouldn't have went to Disney World had we known that she had an autoimmune disease. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't know, and then <laughs> it. it uh, we think that was the first sign. Yeah, I can remember being. Um, why were we in Georgia? I don't know. Was it was at a, a gym meeting? Yeah, meeting? I can remember being at a Starbucks and her not feeling good. Yeah. But anyway, we went to it on a Disney trip, and by the time we flew, yeah, and when we got. To Disney, she didn't want to go anywhere. Well, the first day was fine. It was the second day she told us she didn't feel good. She told us she didn't feel good. And what she for? She was four years I old. I tell you what, she didn't tell us she didn't feel good. She just didn't want to do anything. She was ready to go back to. The, she wanted to go back but to the, the room. Ho- yeah, I want to go back to the room. And we were Hollywood Studios. Yep. And so we went back to the room because you know if your child's not having right. fun at Disney World, something's wrong. You know, we were like, "What in the world's going on?" So we did call. No, we went back to the room, and I realized she had a fever. And then we called the front desk. Called and, the front desk, and, and Disney had a pediatrician in our hotel room in less than an hour. Yep. And 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 he had a cooler, and and prescribed an antibiotic because he she she had a he he said i think she's got a virus because yeah. he ran all the tests i think she's got a virus and um gave her was it an antibiotic right then no i had to but don't you remember i had to get that from that drug store remember and they i found gave the lady you, passed out on oh, the yeah, bench yeah, yeah, yeah. but remember they gave they gave you walgreens information walgreens delivered the medicine yeah, to, to the our fr- room to, yeah yeah it was just amazing how you know disney don't want you to leave <laughs> it worked I mean, out it was like boom 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 it was amazing um she she did have a virus and we needed Tylenol, which we we didn't have. Uh, we needed alternate Tylenol and ibuprofen That's because she had was. a fever. Yep. We had Tylenol, but we didn't have ibuprofen. Mm-hmm. And so Walgreens delivered the the uh, ibuprofen and he gave her an antibiotic mm-hmm. just for precautionary mm-hmm. measures in case it was an infection that we couldn't see. Right. He thought it was viral, but that we needed viral. to start her on those antibiotics just in case it was an infection. And so we did that and that was a bad trip. And we had to go home early. Yeah. Remember? We had to change our flight. That's right. And we went home early. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a bad trip, but she, she didn't feel good at Disney. And then it was like um, not too much longer before she got really bad sick. Right. And <clears throat> she was attending <clears throat> the four-year-old class at Lika's at this time. And um, she came home sick and kids get sick. Yeah. But this was not your normal sickness. Yeah, because you took her to the pediatrician and he ran some tests, and he immediately sent her to UAB. Well, she was sick for sick, sick for about a week, in which we were in contact with her doctor, and we ended up at Baptist Hospital in Montgomery, oh, yeah. and um, they did some some blood work, and they said something's not right. Something's not right. Something's not right, and when 
they said, I want you to follow up with your pediatrician. This was on a weekend. Mm -hmm. So we went to the pediatrician the next day and the pediatrician scared the bejesus out of me because Mm -hmm. he said, you don't have time to pack your bags. You don't have time to do anything. Children's hospitals waiting on you. You go. Go now. Go now. Jason went with me. He was at work. work. Mm -hmm. He was at work. You want some water? No. Okay. So I get in the car and I take my child to children's thinking the worst because her numbers indicated leukemia. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the most frantic I've ever felt in my entire life. You know, just that trip to Birmingham with a sick child, not knowing what was going to happen. Right. And um, we get there and they don't know what's going on. Yeah, that was a long, long process that took months to I figure out. I can remember out being in that had. room that night at nine o'clock and her lymph nodes in her neck were so swollen that you could see them sticking yeah. out on both sides. And her numbers were just zero. Just, yeah. Her, yeah, her white her blood, blood count, count was zero. zero. Yeah. And her red count at that time was elevated. Mm-hmm. Remember? Mm-hmm. Which indicated leukemia. Right. And so they wanted to do a bone marrow biopsy. Mm -hmm. And we stayed at Children's for several days until we had a bone marrow biopsy done. And it confirmed that her body was making the red cells that it needed and the white cells that it needed. But her body was destroying them. Destroying them, yeah. Which indicated there was no leukemia present. Right. Because if it was leukemia, your body wouldn't be making it. Right. It would just... Not be non-existent. Right. So um, <clears throat> we were sent home and we were told that um, she had an autoimmune disease mm-hmm. and we didn't know exactly what kind it was, but we would, you know. It was figure. it was hard to catch the, the autoimmune diseases. There's so many. There's so many and they're hard to catch and they, they kept taking blood and sending it all over the country. And you John know, Hopkins, I believe, was who they finally sent. Um, the they took blood from both you and me. Yeah. To determine if it was a genetic disease. Right. right. They did that. Came back zero. Yeah. Came back nothing. We were relieved for that. And um, bottom line was that it, they thought it was just something that would disappear in time. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, it would disappear in time. So yeah. she's four years old, and we continued to see a hematologist. At Children's Hospital, mm-hmm. and that was pretty regular appointments. Yes. And there were very numerous um, admittance to Children's Hospital. Yeah. I mean, at one time, she stayed in for a long time. Yeah. Because I she, remember driving back and forth Back and night. forth, yeah. yeah. So I would stay with her because Jason had to work, and um, her count was zero, meaning she had no ability to fight infection. Mm-hmm. When the doctors and nurses came in, they were suited up like it was COVID. Yeah. They would have the full-fledged suit on, the yep. hazmat suit. They would have a note on the door that said you could not enter without, you without know, proper, uh, yeah. proper, whatever you call right. it. But um, so this went on: four years old, five years old, six years old, seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, and when then now we're in second grade, and yeah. this has continued to go on. And and I didn't know what to do because I didn't know should I expose her to children and put her in an environment where she could get sick. Or should I keep her at home? Well, doctors told me if you don't expose her to sickness, when she is exposed to sickness, it's going to be worse because her body's building up no immunity. Right. Well, even we even discussed getting rid of all the animals. Yes, because we discussed that with the doctors, and they told us no. They told us no. They told us that that was probably actually beneficial because her being around different bacteria was building up her ability to fight off infection. And we were, she had her chicken Penny at the time. Oh gosh, And yes. Penny was her life. Yes. And go back and watch some of the old videos. Um, Penny was just, she was a BB red. I think so. But that chicken was that child's life. She rode to school with us. Slept in her bedroom. Slept in her bedroom. Kept her from, well, kept her smiling while she was at school to yeah. know that she had Penny. Right. That mama was going to bring with her to carpool yep. when she got out of school. That's right. So, um, you know, we thought, what if we have to get rid of Penny? Yes. But doctors confirmed that, you know, they didn't think it was any, they didn't want her to be around pig feces. Right. Pig feces. But she could be around everything else. Everything remember else. that? Yeah, I remember that. So, um, we had that under control and, uh, she kept Penny and she, she didn't get much better. Mm-mm. 
she didn't get much better. She was, you know, she was just a sickly child. Just, it, it seemed didn't like. Didn't feel good all the time. Never felt never good. Never felt good. Never felt good. Second grade, we were this close to starting doing uh, a low dose of antibiotic shot mm -hmm. at yeah. home every day to try to keep her from getting sick. And the doctor said, you know, that's something that we can do. However, it's a personal preference. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it, we'll do it. If you don't want to do it, then we won't do it. Right. So they let us make that decision. We didn't really want to do it. I mean, who wants to give their child a shot of antibiotics every day? Yeah. And not only were we having to go through this, she had to go have blood work every single day for like 20 days. Yeah. Um, her veins were shot. Yeah. A big bruise on my arm. Her 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 veins were just, I mean. Ooh. They were just monitoring her count and also trying to. Say, trying to get a hold and yeah. see see if it was, it was something called cyclic neutropenia. There was, so, yeah, cyclic, which means it comes in cycles. Like every 21 days she would drop. Yeah. And then she would pick back up. And they yep. were trying to determine if it was cyclic the, neutropenia. Yeah. So we had to have that blood work done for, I want to say it was like 30 days every day. Yep. We would take Penny, the chicken, with us to have the blood work done because it <laughs> helped her to, you know, feel better. Yeah, no, it, it relaxed her. But she wasn't scared of that blood work. She would get in there and she'd put her arm out and she was good to go. But her veins got so bad till she just about didn't have anywhere left. Yeah. To, to give right. it. Right. But we went through that um, and determined it was not cyclic neutropenia, which was a relief because that was would have been lifelong. Yeah, because cyclic doesn't go away. Doesn't go away. Yeah. So to find out it wasn't that was was a big relief. Mm -hmm. um, the autoimmune neutropenia would go away, in, yeah. supposedly in time. Could they possibly could outgrow it? And there was I forget what the chances are, but usually the numbers are good at some point that they could outgrow the autoimmune disease. And what they said was by nine years old, it should be gone. Yeah. So here we are in second grade, and she still doesn't feel good. Right. You know, I don't feel good. And it was that everyday thing. It was something different. Her head hurt. Her stomach hurt. Something hurt every day. Mm -hmm. And I told the, the doctor, I said, we got to do something. I don't know what else to do. You know, she, she feels bad every single day. And they never told me that it could be up here. Yeah. But me, myself, and I was thinking it could be. Yeah. So fast forward to um, fifth grade, uh -huh. and she's, she's starting to think in her mind that maybe it's school that's making her feel so Going bad. into fifth grade. because yeah. yeah. Because the summertime, she felt much better. Yeah, she just started feeling better in summertime. But during... School time, she felt bad. Yeah. So she's maturing enough to realize that she may be feeling bad because it, it, at school she mm -hmm. don't want to she don't want to be there, and she didn't know. Right. And I, well, how was I to know? But right. really, a, a fourth grader, how she's supposed to know? Yeah. She didn't know, and so we made the decision that um, we'll try to homeschool. We will try to homeschool. Which, Summer uh, of fourth grade, we decided that. Well, in the fourth grade. Yeah. Um, this was pre-COVID. It was pre-COVID yeah, when yeah. we decided. When we decided, and then COVID did hit. Yeah, once, that, that year. Yeah, that year. So um, we decided in like December of fourth grade that she would be homeschooled the next year, and COVID started, what, February? Yeah. So we had already decided it, and it we everybody thought that we were doing it because of COVID. And true enough, I could not have sent her to school with her autoimmune, with her autoimmune, yeah. with the COVID yeah. that was happening, you know, I couldn't have done that. But we'd already made a decision to homeschool, so it wasn't anything to do with that. And I did not know where to start, but I knew as a parent, I had yeah. to do what was right for my child. It was very, very stressful um, trying to figure out where to even begin, and. We know there's a lot of families out there that feel the same way as we did. Um, you talk to, I don't know how many people. Well, Robert at Daybird Aviaries mm -hmm. was a big um, help to me. Um, not telling everybody to reach out to Robert, yeah. but he was kind of my determining factor that I could do this. Then I had, we had Wes. Yes, Wes Blair at the Wes Neck Blair. and um, And then you had Tracy. Yeah, Tracy Stevens. And then Laura is simply making it. Yes. Now, Laura made me feel 
comfortable and more comfortable at doing it than, but you had more interactions with the other ones. I did. But Laura made me feel a lot better. Well, I think that was because most of those people I dealt with without you. And then when we met with Laura, it was kind of like a one-on-one and you were with me. And and Laura said, you know, it was the best thing that could have happened to her kids. And she felt that Mary Carl was very similar to her children's situation, not with the neutropenia, but with just not being... Not not being happy. That's right. And then, of course, you know, Laura and Chip and them, they're very similar to us as, you know, they have a huge, they got a really big farm, um, but a homestead, and they did that full-time at the time. We weren't doing it Mm full-time. And their kids were involved in that process. And their kids, you know, loved chickens and animals and were involved in all the chores. And 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 they were very... very, That's all they knew. That's what they knew. They were very music-oriented. Yes. So they needed to have that time to focus on their music to where she could take them to, you know... Right. Out of town to their music lessons and things like that. So she needed the extra time, much less the help on the farm. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, so Laura told told me, the first thing you need to do is get a cover school. Get a cover school. I was like, what is a cover school? Well, in the state of Alabama, you can be your own cover school. Yes. Which means responsible for all of your children's grades and uh-huh. reporting it to the state yourself. But you have to set your own self up as a school. Right. Basically. I didn't want to be responsible. I wanted somebody else to be responsible, mm-hmm. which in turn meant I would pay somebody to take care of everything for me, and I would report it to them. Well, I went with who Laura used, which is Valleydale Academy, based out of Birmingham. I've never been to Valleydale Academy in Birmingham. It's all been done virtually for mm-hmm. me. But I went ahead and sent them an email, and they sent me a packet as to what I was responsible for and when I needed to do what and how much it cost. And I enrolled um, Mary Carl as a homeschool student. And um, I'm the teacher, but yes. I, and I'm responsible for reporting the grades to them, mm-hmm. which they in turn reported to the state. Right. The number of days that she attends. Um, uh, they handle that. If I report it to them, then they turn it over. So that part, I pay what, $25 a month? I think that's right. And um, it's only during the school months. Right. It's not year round. And they take care of that. There are numerous different, um, what do you call it? Cover schools. Yes. But this is who I went with because it's who Laura used. Right. So, you know, I just, at that point, I just, Robert takes care of his, himself. Um, Tracy used somebody that was because of athletics Mm -hmm. and her child plays sports. And then, um, I was told of another one that's in Montgomery called Ezekiel Academy. Mm-hmm. Um, there are lots. You just yeah. kind of have to find out on your own right. who you want to be your cover school if you don't want to do it yourself. Every state's different, so you have to research Yeah, that. every state's different. Every state's different. And then I went to the trouble of, what What am I going to use for a curriculum? Yeah, I don't the know curriculum where to start. Was, to me, that was the biggest... And most stressful thing was was the curriculum because you're you just you there's so many out there and you know your child but then again you don't know your child right. when it comes to doing what yeah, you're going to do at home. You know, all we did was homework that the school yeah, that she was going we had to no gave choice. us. I mean, you do we didn't what they know designed. if if she's a visual learner or audible learner or all this, and they make all these curriculum that fits you know your, your type child. of child and we we didn't know but i did know that i didn't want something computer based yeah um that was my personal preference i didn't want her sitting in front of a computer screen all day and i wanted a book bound spiral bound that's what they call it uh-huh. spiral bound curriculum that i could pick up and take with me right if if we wanted to go to the beach for the week i want to take those books with me and her do it at the beach right um, not to say you couldn't take a laptop with you, right. but that's just, that was my, that's what I wanted. So Laura told us about a curriculum called Book Shark. Yep. And that's and what Laura used with her children. That's what, and it was all, it's all inclusive, has everything in it. And that's what we we're looking for. You know, we're like, man, it's got everything in it. Boom. But it's literature based. It's literature based. And so I 
bought the complete package. Mary Carl said, I'll read as much as you want me to. I don't mind reading. I don't mind reading. Yeah. Well, we get the curriculum, and it, it you don't mind reading. You're going to be reading from sun up, sun down. It is but a lot of reading. If that's what your child yes. likes, then that was a good choice. However, it was not such a good choice for us. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, even the history in it was all literature. It was all um, literature. You read it was stories. so much reading. And come to find out, Mary Carl did not like it. And it. <laughs> she didn't fight us on no, it. No, she didn't fight she, us she on it. She did what she needed to do, right. but she did not like it. She didn't like it at all. So um, here I am with a $900 curriculum right. that I bought for the year that's all inclusive, that's literature based, and she didn't like it. So mid year, um, I decided that we needed to make some changes, and I ended up changing the. What did I change? I didn't change the history. I changed the English. English. Because there was so much liter the English was literature. Just all literature. And there was um it was it was almost ninety nine percent literature based. You know, all it was, was to me was just a lot of reading. Yeah, it was just books after books. I had our cabinet down there was slap full of readers and it i mean like books 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 but there was nothing that talked about commas and prepositions no, it was and just read this and read so this book. you know we were so used to that type of stuff you know that's what we were taught in school you know so how was she going to learn this and how was i going to teach it to her yeah and so you were you felt really uncomfortable with that and the literature was my big i mean the english was my biggest problem yeah. so i said you know even though i spent nine hundred dollars on this curriculum i got to make a change and so i bought um a different english curriculum mid-year i changed from book shark to the good and the beautiful right and that worked out a lot better for us. It was kind of notebook based, yeah. and it was it was what I was used to. It was what we're used to, you know, you know, commas and periods, and yeah. you know, when to capitalize and nouns and, and verbs yes. and adjectives and all that. And and then we got into how to write an essay yes. towards the end of the year. And I thought this is what we need. This is yeah. what we need. So right. even though I had spent nine hundred dollars, I said I made a mistake. I'm just going to have to bite the bullet. And you know, but that was just you didn't spend nine hundred dollars for the English. No, you spent for, for the everything. bookshop. Yeah, for everything. But I had to turn around and buy a different. Right. curriculum which i said you know if that's what it takes then that's what it takes so i, I like the good and the beautiful and yeah. i said next year that's what we'll use right. and next year i learned from my mistakes next year meaning this year right so at the beginning of um the summer as soon as school was out for the for the fifth grade i went ahead and ordered the curriculum for the sixth grade because i knew that with covid there were going to be so many people homeschooling yeah that that the curriculum was going to be short, you know, short to get here. Right. So um, here's what we went with. Well, before that, I will say this. From what I gather on when we're doing all our research on which curriculum we wanted to do, typically it gives you everything but the math. Usually the math is um, a little bit different. The math, because there's so many different options out there, they... um. They let you choose your math curriculum. They let you choose your math curriculum. Book and chart was, um, you could choose between... Matthew C. Matthew C., which uh -huh. we don't know anything about, but we we did some some math evaluations, yeah. and, and Jason found out, Jason's the math teacher, he found out what math worked best for him for me, and for her. Right, and then on the math, you could, you know, I spent weeks trying to figure out what math curriculum, because there's so many out there, but... um. The uh, the two I came down to were, I remember it was Singapore, and then there was one more. I can't think of the name Abeka of it. Rebecca. Wasn't Rebecca, because that's what she had at her current school, and she hated it. I knew what she did not like, and she hated Rebecca. And what, what those were is, is it, you just did so many of the Repetition. problems. Just so, you know, you may do 25 multiplication, and just like that. And then the next day would be division and multiplication the next day, you know. So it was, um, what did they call it? Now my mind's gone blank. Repetition? What she is called. Mastery? Uh, she's got Singapore's mastery, where Singapore is is you master one element. So, so it's multiplication. Once you get done with that, you go to division. You don't go back to the multiplication. Until you need to use until it you, Until the very end, and then you do a uh, review. 
So it's mastery. It's not, it's a word. Spiral? spiral. That's it. It's not spiral. But um, the Singapore isn't repetition. We do something different every day. Every it's, lesson. It's not, we do multiplication, the next day multiplication, next day multiplication. And it's not, you sit down and do 50 multiplication problems. It's, it's, it's a little bit different. But Singapore is hard. Um, so very advanced math. So when I was looking for math, I knew to stay away from anything that had... Spiral based. That was workbook based, where you did nothing but workbook stuff. Yeah. I knew she absolutely hated it. So that's when I started narrowing it down. Matthew C. was one, and then there was one more, and then it was Singapore. And actually, at Singapore, we could actually do a little bit of it. They gave us like a little test sheet. Yeah. To and kind that of was see to where she, what level, because what level she was at. It and, said that most of the time you needed to go down a level. Yeah, because Singapore's Singapore's tough because come to find out the Singapore as a whole is the best math country, I guess per se. They're they just excel in it and they're so good at it that other countries are like, Hey, what are y'all doing different? And so they came up with this curriculum and hence the name Singapore and so it is a little bit more advanced and when I when I showed her the test to see where she was she was on the right level the level so we didn't have to go down and she enjoyed it yeah so I was like we got to do this because the worst thing I kept thinking the worst thing can happen is when we sit down to do something it's gonna be like pulling teeth she's gonna you know whine and fuss and gripe and but that's not the case with the math at all well, there are days when I say, well, when you were working uh-huh. last year, uh-huh. you did it after you got home from work. I did. It'd be about seven o'clock at night and they'd be doing math. Yeah. And um, she would say, Daddy, you ready to do math? Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself. That's right. What? Yeah. What is she saying? Are you ready to do you math? ready to do math. What kid wants to do math? And what's, I'll tell you what's great, especially with the math, and I, I don't do the other, y'all handle it, is that if it's something simple, we'll do three days in one day. Yep. You know, so, but if it's something hard she don't get, we'll spend three days on that one sub, you yeah, know, one thing until she gets it. So that's what's that's the awesome about the homeschooling. Is you can work at your own yeah. pace. Now, we do a four-day curriculum. Right. Because, um, well... Besides, we can. <laughs> besides the fact that we're busy, yeah. we, it's a four ba- four day based yes. curriculum, and that's what we do. Um, you can choose five days. You can work seven days a week if you want to. Whatever it just depends you want to do. Your kid yeah. and your schedule. Um, you can work ahead. You can you can finish the year at Christmas if you want right. to. You can go on to the seventh grade at Christmas if you want to. Right. It just depends on your schedule. Right. Work. Do what works for you. So that led me to history. I didn't know what I was going to do mm-hmm. um, for history because I didn't like the book short because it was so literature based. Right. Um, if she wanted to learn about something, I remember she read a book. Um, the first week of Bookshark, it was Lee Luan, uh-huh. Badge of Courage, uh-huh. and it was about China. Uh-huh. And not to say that she didn't enjoy that book because she would tell me things, stories about the rice fields. Right. And about, it was story-based. It was about a boy that grew up in, in China and how he experienced his life. And she did enjoy that, but she didn't enjoy putting that book down in three days and picking up another, another book. Yeah. That she might not enjoy right. so much. So I chose moving beyond the page for history. Yes. And that this is our first year as using that. Um, so far it's worked well. It's, it's a, I don't really know how to describe what the sixth grade history is because it goes from civil war to civil rights, Mm -hmm. geography of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, you know, it scatters around. And so once you finish that book, you go on to another one and I just let her pick. Yeah. We're already finished with, um, Whoa! What it was the Incas and the Aztecs, yes. and that's what she yeah. chose to do first. Was the Incas, the Mayans, and the Aztecs? Mm-hmm. We completed that book, so she moved on to the next one, which is Geography of the World. That's what she chose to do now. Yes. Well, when we finish this one, I'll let her choose the next one, and it's a stack of books that just kind of scatters about, which makes it good. Yeah, and I I helped her with it one day. I, I forget why, and um, I enjoyed it. It was just a lot of visual. In this history, yeah. it's not just all words. Yeah. There's this, this a ton, and it's all colors, and you know. So we're talking about the Incas and Aztecs. So it's showing their headdresses and how they, you know, it was, 
it was really, really cool. Well, now she's on to geography of the world. And this past week, she did some some Mexican history. Uh-huh. And um, when she finished her history, she said, Mama, I want something Mexican to eat. What do we have? <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's just... Last year, I was so one-on-one with her. Yeah. It was fifth grade. It was our first year doing it. I literally sat down, read the stuff with her. We went over the questions all together. Mm -hmm. This year, besides the fact that we're moving and we're crazy, she's older and she needs to do more of it herself. She does need to start doing some of this. So what I do is I tag the pages that she needs to do. I tag questions she needs to answer. She reads it. She answers the questions. If she has any problems, she tells me. Right. Then we go over it together. And that's the case with the, um, I do the English with her. Right. We go over the English question by question, because to me, that's not something she can do by herself. Right, it right. needs to be taught. Well, the same with the math. Same with the math. Yeah. And so she does her history and her science by herself. Now, the science, we really liked the book Shark Science you last did. year. Really did. Uh, last year, we did the human body. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I mean, she liked it so much that she wanted to continue on. So I bought the Bookshark Science Curriculum. Mm -hmm. And this year, she's not caring so much about what she's learning, but the curriculum is good. Yeah. Um, She's learning about atoms and cells and nucleus. Chemistry. Chemistry. And she just doesn't care about that kind of thing. But hey, you know, it's got to be learned at some point. Right. So um, the curriculum is good. It's just that she's not too interested in what she's learning. Um, And... You can go to any of these. I bought it all separately. Yeah. I went to Moving Beyond the Page and bought my history cur- curriculum, turned around, went to the Good and the Beautiful and bought the English curriculum. Bookshark does sell it by subject. So yes. I bought the science curriculum separate. Um, and you can do that. But, you know, in the beginning, I was just so confused. I had to start somewhere. Right. And I learned from my mistake. And yes, it was a $900 mistake. But hey, you know, it. it but you did, at the end of the year, you did resell it. I did resell it, and I got about half of what I paid for it, and some of it wasn't even used because I did change right. that English. And but you can buy used curriculum as well. Yes, and the reason I didn't buy used the first year is because I didn't know what I was doing. Right. I felt like if I didn't buy it from Bookshark, then I might be missing something. You might be missing something. Well, this year I don't feel that way. If yes. I'm missing something, hey, I go to the library, I check it out, yep. or I find, find it on it. Google, yep. or you know, I'm not so stressed about right. it. Right. But in the beginning, I will say I was a mess yes. because I didn't. I wanted everything to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be. Right. It does not have to be perfect. You can. I uh, uh, also say that if you, you know, if you can do it or not. Yeah. Um. Once you get started, I have a friend that homeschooled last year, and she said that she just could not be there for the accountability. Yeah. She would not make her kids do her work and. I mean, I'm just, I know I'm not going to do that. I I know my child has to learn. I know what she has to do. I know what I have to turn in. But if you're a parent that's not responsible, I mean, I I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. Not, not saying that I'm a good parent, but if you can't do it, if if you you know that you don't have the time, what it takes, or if you're working a full-time job. Yeah. Or, you know, you, you're, you, the, the days where just, just. I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do what, it. I don't want to do it. Yeah, that? yeah. And then you just break and give in. Uh, you so can't you, do that. You can't do that. Yeah. But the, I will say that there's never been a day when Mary Carl says, I don't want to do it no. because she knows what she's got she to do. She knows she's got to do it. Now, there were a few times last year when I said, uh, you know, you're going to have to go back to school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, she knew she had to do it. Yeah. And that was not. I, sh- I, I shouldn't have said that, but it was it was just something that we were having a bad day. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can either do it at home and do your work or you can do it at school and do your work. Right. And it works for us. It does work for us. I am not one to say homeschool's the way to go. Right. Because it is a individual basis. Yep. It depends on your child. It depends on your personal situations. Right. But, um. You know, I've had, I just had a lot of people ask what we use, and that is what we use. And So, r- history is moving beyond the page. English is the good and the beautiful. Science is book shark, and math is Singapore. That's what we're doing. That's right. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I, I would say she does some art because she draws just about all day, but... You yeah. can fill in with anything you yeah, want to. Yeah, yeah, there's all kind of, you can get art, you can get 
uh, music, music. You can get foreign language, language, foreign languages. There's so many. There's so many options, and you can get credit for those things yes. too. Last year we did do art. We did. Do we, art. did uh, we actually bought an art curriculum mm-hmm. from Bookshark. We did because Mary Carl's interested in art, and um, but you don't have to. Just see what's required by your state and what your child's interests are. And Incorporate lot, anything you want to. And what's the cool thing about it is, you know, like a lot of this stuff, they'll give you can get like the science, you can get experiments. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and you can actually do it because it's just you and your your child, or if you got more than one, you know, it's just that one And that's on one, so another thing, as I was going to say, is yeah. at multiple children. You can combine the grades. Yes. If your child's in, well, I would say, I don't know if it'd be easier, like fifth and seventh. Some of Tristan and Piper's stuff, uh-huh. they do together. They do together. And they, they, they do that as, you know, one curriculum. And they make it work. Right. But um, you just have to see... You don't want your fifth grader, if it's not advanced enough to do seventh grade. Right. Individual basis. Right, right. And I also will say this, too. One of the biggest things that took, especially you, because I wasn't here. I was working my full-time job to get used to, and I used to have to comfort you on this, was that how, you know, your child goes to school at 8 and gets out at 3. Well, homeschool. Seven hours. Yeah. Homeschool, you may start. At eight, and you may be finished at eleven, or ten, or, or nine thirty, or you yeah, know, it depends on how quick that that one subject goes. If she picks up on it and it's done, but I know for the longest time you kept telling me she's not learning anything. It only takes us two to three hours. She's not, and then of course when I got home I do the math, but you know she's not learning. It's just she's not learning. And I kept you know I was like, look, you know you're one on one with your child. Yep. There's not. 30 plus kids because we're, we're a small town you may have 30 kids in your class you know if you're larger you may have 100 mm-hmm. in that class so you think about that how many there's times no, there's i no, gotta go to the restroom yep or can you stop yep. can, can we go over that again there is no um going backwards you're you're Right, and you got different learning levels. It may take one child, you know. You may be longer. a week on a subject where you could be two days if you were working. Right, with so one if you're in a one. classroom with the with fifty kids, and you know twenty percent of them can't pick up that one subject you're doing that week. That's right. So it slows everything else down. So you can see how why it would take so much. Plus, you got breaks and yeah. you got all play time, and you so, got lunch. You got. I yeah. mean, you know, there are times when Mary Carl will eat lunch and do her work at the same time. Correct. So you got to think about all that all that time that's spent doing things other than schoolwork, right? Or that you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs because you get it, but this kid over here doesn't get it. So right. you're just yeah, you know, like, come on, right. can we? You know? Yeah, so I'm just, saying. So it's it's just you got all that compared to just one on one with one child. So it, of course it's going to be way way faster. That's right. Way and faster, I have and a, you'll know if your child's picking up on it or not. I have a friend that's homeschooling for the first time this year, and I'll periodically ask her how's it going, and she's like, "It's going good. I just don't feel like she's learning anything. We're done exact in two same hours. Thing. Yep, we're done in two hours. And and I try to say it, and you you just can't explain it to somebody that you're done in two hours. And your kid goes to school for seven hours, but look at all the wasted time. Yes. I mean, and I'm not one to say you need to homeschool. I'm not saying that. I'm right. just saying that's how it happens. Yes. It's because there is a lot of wasted time. Well, you know, just I always think, you know, how we used to do the meat chickens and how you think about if you did a hundred chickens and you had to spend an extra minute per chicken, so that's 100 minutes. Yeah. So in the same concept, because that's where my brain right. works, but if you have 50 kids in there and... You're spending an extra minute on every kid. That's, and that's another hour. That's 50 hour. minutes. And think about the time of stopping and the kids stopping and they have to go turn their page in yep. and go sit back down. So all of that just adds up over it the does. day. It does. And so that that's how you go so from seven, two hours yep. or three hours to, to seven, seven hours. hours. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. So, so that that's that's one thing that I really really would like people to know that are thinking about homeschooling or just starting homeschooling that that's why you know it just takes so much longer. And also, I will say that because I use Moving Beyond the Page for history doesn't mean you should use Moving Beyond the Page. For oh yeah, history. that's right. You do your own individual research. It's out there. You just gotta yeah. search. I didn't get it. You know, initially, but it took you a year. It did. It took me a year. That year was called my experiment year. 
And I, I realize now what I need to do, what I'm looking for, and you can do it too. Yeah, you can once research you get past on your that. own. Don't use moving beyond the page because Brooke used moving yeah. beyond the page. Use what you think fits best for you as a teacher and your child as a learner. And w- once you get past that first year, it's, a it's, it's easy. It's I am, so much easier. I feel like a professional yeah, after one year. Really. And you know what? The people we talked to were the they same way. They told us way. the same way. They thought it was, you know, they were like, you're just... You're just making too much into yeah. it. You're making it more than what it is. Because, you know, is. I remember, you know, you asking Tracy, you know, like, you know, well, this, this, this. She goes, well, you do what you want. That's, that's right. And do what like, you want. That does, you, Robert told me the same thing. you just do what you want? You, you, you child. But you can. Once you see that, sit down, and after six months of doing it, you realize, you know, if... If you don't like let Mary Carl pick what history she wants yep, to do, you right. just do the one you want to do. That's right. Yeah, I mean, so it's 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 so much flexible and it's not as complicated. It's complicated, well, but it's not near as complicated as we as parents make it out to be. When I started, I thought, well, we need to get started at nine o'clock a.m. Yeah. every morning. You need to have your breakfast date, and you need to be sitting down at your desk, and we need to start at nine o'clock, and we need to be finished by twelve o'clock. Yeah, that's not the case. That's not the you case. You gotta go. Uh, go to the bank at nine o'clock. Guess what? You do your work when you get back at right. ten o'clock, and your kid goes with you. That's right. So, so I hope this helps some people. Helps some people. But I really do. Please don't ask me what you should do, and I don't mean that in a negative way. It's individual based. It is. Don't ask me what I think you should use for your kid if they're yeah. if they're spiral based. What do you think? You're just gonna have to Google it. You're just gonna have to find out on your own. I don't mind helping anybody, and no. I don't mean it that way. But I can't answer what works for you. And also look on YouTube because there are homeschool channels. Sure. And and also, I did this one. We're looking for the math. When I was looking for the math, is is that I would find a math curriculum, and then I would uh search it on YouTube and you would have parents on there that are, and most of the time they would have a lot of, you know, like three to five kids. Mm -hmm. And so they would, um, and they'd been doing it for a a long period of time. And so they would give you comparison between a Becca and Singapore, which one they liked and why. Yeah. Once you get it narrowed down, then you can do that. You can just Google Singapore or Becca, Singapore, you know, whatever, whatever you're Mm -hmm. comparing, you can say, and it'll tell you the pros and the cons Mm -hmm. and what other people have found. But this has been our experience and I hope it helps you. Yeah. I hope it helped you too. So you ready to go pack some more stuff? (laughs) We gotta move some furniture today. Feeling We're almost strong. moved out. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling good. Feeling good. I am. All right, guys. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Y'all be good. <laughs> <laughs>